What is change management? Everyone talks about it. Some organizations, I should say, do it very well. Some not very, <laughs> not very good at all. And most kind of fall somewhere in between. Well, the ultimate purpose of change management is to reduce risk. All right, so we can have administrative controls or management controls, and we can also have technical controls or software or systems that can automate some of that process and make sure that it's enforced so that people understand that their jobs depend upon doing things in a very uh, programmatic and a very methodical uh, process or methodical way. Really, that makes sure that we coordinate changes and that we're doing so in a very uh, controlled process or a controlled way so that we don't have changes that collide with one another. In other words, like a change collision. Because we have a very big environment all right, where we may have hundreds or thousands of, of users, maybe you know, hundreds or thousands of IT personnel even, depending upon the size of the organization. If you have that many people and you may have you know, several thousand changes taking place a week, you have to make sure that they're coordinated in such a fashion that someone's looking at a big picture, if you will, to make sure these things don't step on each other. So one area is making a change to do you know, whatever, A, B, and C. Another organization in another part of the company is doing uh, some changes that are, can basically undo or step on those changes. It becomes very difficult to troubleshoot. And it also is problematic for the corporation or for the, for the organization, especially as far as end users are concerned. Because if, if they suddenly lose connectivity or they lose access to a service, and no one seems to know why, as you can imagine, that's an issue. All right, so we need to ensure that procedures are followed for the reasons I just spoke about and to make sure that we minimize uh, risk. Okay, that's really what our, what our ultimate goal is, is to reduce or mitigate risk as much as possible. So we also need to make sure that we have, if you don't already, is established change and maintenance windows. We need to have a standardized time when we can make changes. Typically, that's going to be when it's the least impact on the network and the least impact for users. Now, if you're a, an organization that provides 24 by 7 service, that may not necessarily be really a, a reality for you because you have people using your service all the time. However, more than likely, unless you're a global organization that this gets used from a central location around the globe, which more, more than likely is not the case, you'll have se you know, separate locations around, around the globe to handle those kind of uh, different uh, disparate time, time zones and, and users in different geographic locations. But let's just say you, you, know, you do have an organization where everybody uses a centralized uh, set of servers and set of, a centralized set of resources. More than likely, if you monitor that usage throughout the day or for a 24-hour period or maybe for a week, you can identify some periods of time when usage is less or slight, or slightly lower rather, than other times. All right, so whether it's like, say, 1 in the morning till 6 in the morning or, or what have you, there are change windows that you can utilize to minimize impact. All right, so having a defined set of windows allows you to coordinate all of your changes so they take place during that period of time, and it mitigates or minimizes the risk uh, to the organization and, of course, to the end users. And then on top of that, once we have a mature change model or change management process in place, we need to make sure that we document. All right, document, document, document. It's extremely important. It's something that nobody likes to do. Okay, I realize that. Everybody realizes that. But it is extremely critical in the event that something goes wrong. We have to understand what was done and, most importantly, how to get back out of it. All right, so documented methods of procedure or a MOP or a standard operating procedure, you know, an SOP, depending upon what you, your organization calls it, you need to make sure that you have that in place. All right, now there are a number of software programs, this happening to be one of them. All right, BMC makes a program called Remedy, but there's a lot of different change management pieces of software out there. But it allows you to uh, set up a workflow so that your changes are recorded, they're documented step by step by step. Okay, you have a, a parent change, and then you have a number of tasks under, underneath of that. Uh, you have the requester, the classification, the work info, what systems are going to be affected, the tasks, who's going to actually work on it. Any relationships as far as you know, inter, inter system uh, interdependencies, the dates that they're going to occur, the date and time, is it a multi night change, so on and so forth. And then you have to also attach, or you should attach, your, your MOPs or your methods of operation or methods of procedure, your SOPs, and so on and so forth. Any back out uh, plans or back out procedures, all of these things can be attached to the ticket or attached to the change request. So that way, when the person actually doing the change, in fact, has to uh, implement, especially if it's someone that, maybe not the same person that created this change request, they know how to get back out of it if something were to go wrong, okay? And then once all of these things are put in, then there's a workflow, again, that will uh, kick off an email or some type of workflow that 
uh, requires authorization. Okay, was it peer reviewed? You know, you can go through and define whatever is appropriate for your specific organization, but it will get approval. And then once it's approved, then it gets scheduled, implemented, and then ultimately closed. Okay, and as I mentioned, the change management process should have an approval chain to document that it's actually understood what's happening and to make sure that it is in compliance with corporate policies and procedures. All right, so has the change been tested? Has a rollback or a backout procedure been documented? Okay, as I mentioned, all of these things should be incorporated into the ticket either as, either as a link to an external document or directly within that change request itself. All right, has it been peer reviewed? A lot of organizations will have, you know, say one or two days a week where they review all changes before they get scheduled to be implemented. So you may have uh, some type of checks and balances in place where the person that's creating the change request also has to seek the approval of either a peer or some other group or you know in some fashion have those things reviewed to make sure that it, that they didn't miss anything is really what it boils down to all right and then have the affected uh, users been notified because as we know no one likes surprises right we want to make sure that everybody knows what's happening when so if they start to get alerts on their systems bells and whistles start going off whether you have a a knock or some type of, of monitoring organization they start seeing a bunch of anomalies or alerts they can quickly understand what's happening you can let them know hey i'm going to be taking this system down from you know 1 a.m to 3 a.m if you see alerts from that you know during that time period just go ahead and disregard you know things along those lines next with change management we want to make sure as i said you know previously and i'll say it again probably a dozen more times we have to document 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 all right we need to make sure this stuff is recorded we have to make sure that we understand any downstream systems that might be affected. All right, we make a change on, our, on a network switch that could have a multitude of, of impacts on servers, uh, applications, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. All right, especially when we're talking about security patches, firewall rules, things along those lines. All right, so servers, our storage arrays, network itself, applications, all of these things can be affected uh, if we make a change and the change goes wrong or it in effect goes right but it makes changes that we didn't really account for all right so if you have some type of uh, change management or configuration management database like some type of cmdb well that can also uh, help you in a bit of a side note but if you have some type of cmdb that supposedly <laughs> if it's implemented properly and again a lot of them are not but if it's implemented properly it will it will show you the downstream effects of changes so you can look kind of theoretically before you make any types of, of changes you can see the impact and kind of the downstream effect of those changes, again, if it's set up properly and it's actually fully functional. And then we want to make sure that we notify either our NOC or whoever is monitoring uh, these changes. We want to make sure we notify when the changes begin, okay, and let, let the application owners know, hey, I'm getting ready to start doing uh, change A, B, and C. And then we also notify them when the changes end.